This is chapter 8, Grief and Loss and the Effects on the Family System. The interesting thing about uh, multi-generational family systems theory and grief and loss is that each person we know uh, deals with grief and loss, grieving, differently. And so that has pretty important implications for a family system, especially if that family system has some dysfunction. Um, so it may be functioning, it may be barely functioning before the loss, and then that loss may impact the homeostasis, create such a disturbance that it will have a drastic effect on the family system. It's, it's difficult for any family system. Um, Murray Bone uh, created a multi-generational family systems theory and um, I usually ask about the family system and the family, the siblings, parents, children, during an intake or an assessment of a client uh, dealing with grief and loss, any type of counseling, but grief and loss also. And uh, it's important to understand the functionality and um, the relationships within the family system and, and how that individual who died related to the family system and interacted within that system. Was there codependency? Was there addiction? Um, were, were individuals caring for an elderly individual? Um, was it a brand new relationship? What was the relationship as part of that whole family system? Was there discordance? Did one person uh, really get along? Did another person not get along with this individual? Was this individual a uh, person who entered into the family system through a relationship? And was that relationship approved of? Um, so it's, it's very interesting, but some of the family issues to consider are um, the stages of the life cycle that everybody is in in the family system as well as where that individual who died was in the stages of life and how all of that interplayed. Each person has a role to play in a family and what was that individual's role? And because that individual is no longer physically with the family, who will take on that role? Does somebody need to take on that role? Will it be distributed? What's going on with that? What about the emotional integration with the family? Um, how does that family express or not express emotions? And how do they communicate with one another? Um, what are the socio-cultural factors? What's the social functioning? of that family. The family is functioning within a larger social structure. Do they have a support system? Does one person in the family have a support system and nobody else? Um, is the family supportive of, of one another? Um, family tasks related to loss. There has to be a recognition of the loss and acknowledgement of the unique grief experiences of each family member. Um, a healthy family might see differences as strengths. An unhealthy family might see them as weaknesses or why don't, why don't you do it this way? The family must reorganize with roles reassigned to other family members or abandoned thus reducing a sense of chaos. There needs to be reinvestment of family, of family members in this new family while maintaining a sense of connection with the deceased. Let me share my personal story, how, how loss affects family, briefly. Um, my parents were elderly and we tried to help them 
uh, remain uh, living on their own for as long as possible in, uh, in their own home. And family meetings were so important for me, my older sister, and my younger brother, defining our roles while my parents were alive, and then talking with our parents about those roles. A lot of times the lack of communication uh, is, is very detrimental. Um, so communication is key. So for instance, um, my brother is uh, better off financially than me or my sister, so he helped to uh, help my parents financially, and we were fortunate enough that he had that ability. Um, my, my sister uh, lives far away uh, in South Carolina, but she was able to take off work when needed for extended periods of time and then go back home for extended periods of time. So for instance, if one of my parents was in a hospital, she could take off two weeks. Um, she works in real estate. She could take off two weeks and come up and do long-term care with them. And my role was to deal with all of the medication, all of the doctors, all of the hospitals, and um, uh, when they were not in need of medical attention to drive home every weekend to make sure everything was okay. And we all maintained phone contact as well. After uh, my father and mother had uh, more severe uh, medical conditions, um, we had planned ahead. Fortunately, my my sister was able to um, purchase a house that had what's called an in-law sweet and uh, so even though they really wanted to remain independent uh, they lived with my sister for a while my brother helped to care for take care of uh, them financially by helping my sister so that she wouldn't have to do 100 percent of the burden um, and burden you know that is a uh, definable concept a loving burden um, but care and uh, so uh, he would pro provide some help. Uh, and, um, and I then took on the role of if they were in the hospital, I would fly down and uh, take care of uh, all of the medical decisions with the hospital and help her out if it was more severe. Um, they died uh, within a year of each other um, about uh, 11 months apart um, and had gradually declined. We had instituted hospice almost for the entire last year uh, either with my father or mother. Um, afterward my goal we were so close we were a very close-knit family we all have dysfunctions problems, but my brother and sister and I were really able to work together, and the one thing I wanted to do was to remain close afterwards, and I think we have, but um, I don't think that my brother and sister and I have remained close in the same way, because we no longer have that, uh, let's go to my parents for the holidays, let's go um, meet uh, in Chambersburg, Central PA at a certain time. Let's go on vacation or whatever. We don't have that parental family of origin place to go. We all have our own families now. We live, my brother's in New York, my sister's in South Carolina. So we're not able to connect in the same way. Um, and that's a loss of that same connection that our parents created, that central, centrality. But it affects every family differently, and it's important to talk about how it affects the family. Warden brings up the death of a child again. We talked about most of these things. He brings it up just because it is so devastating. Children whose parents die. I gave you my example. 
Um, and uh, it happens at different times. It's very difficult for people who lose a parent at any age. Um, but there is a sense of, I'm not even sure how to put it, but perhaps unfairness of, of wondering why this occurred if it was unexpected and untimely. And by untimely, I mean not expected, traumatic, um, an example would be many of my clients who were younger, who were children, uh, experienced the loss of a parent because of a heart attack or cancer. Um, when I was a school counselor, grief and loss was one of the most important parts of my job. We always had a grief and loss group going at the school. Um, Every week I had three elementary schools with 500 children in each elementary school. So that's 1,500 children. And I divided up my week as evenly as possible. But every week at least one child experienced some loss. Whether it was a loss of a pet, a friend, a teacher, a parent, a sibling, a grandparent, whatever whatever loss occurred, all of those emotions came with them into the school environment. And many times teachers did not know that they had experienced a loss, did not understand what was occurring with the child. Um, so it's very important. Um, so changes after the loss are often very difficult for a child to deal with. So for instance, if one of the parents starts dating again, um, children want to know if they can be cared for, what will happen? It's very difficult if a child loses both parents and to find a loving and nurturing um, caregiver. Our societal uh, and that is really overburdened. Um, it's very difficult to provide good care for children in the United States. There's a lack of funding, which should be one of the most important things. Uh, I talked a little bit about the different organizations, uh, Good Grief Center and Caring Center. Um, many times parents grieve, but don't talk to children about grief. So children in a grief and loss group really connect. I think grief and loss groups are great for everybody but especially helpful for children. Um, I read a post uh, from this last um, series on regret and I had mentioned that um, if there is abuse or negativity or something like that, going through the role plays, imagining the deceased might not be the best way to go. So the question is, well, what would be a good way to go? And going through a lot of these steps that I talked about in our earlier session today, the different steps, um, but not using role play when dealing with regret, but instead using, and I rarely say this, CBT, and REBT are very good alternatives because people who have had a negative experience with others often carry around some type of negative self-talk. Um, okay, thank you for your online attendance.